Petra is an ancient city that lies in present-day Jordan and dates back to the 4th century B.C. Ruins of the once great metropolis and trading center now serve as an important archaeologic site and tourist attraction. Petra is located about 150 miles south of both Jerusalem and Amman, the capital of Jordan, and about midway between Damascus, Syria, and the Red Sea, making it ideally suited as a hub of commerce in the area. The site is considered significant by historians and archaeologists alike because of its beautiful rock-cut architecture and innovative water management system, the latter of which made the region inhabitable, given that it is surrounded by desert and rugged, mountainous terrain. Petra has also been referred to as the Rose City because of the color of the stones used in its buildings. The ancient city of Petra, Jordan, is located in a remote valley, nestled among sandstone mountains and cliffs. It was purported to be one of the places where Moses struck a rock and water gushed forth. Later, the Nabataeans, an Arab tribe, made it their capital. And during this time, it flourished, becoming an important trade center, especially for spices. Noted carvers, the Nabataeans chiseled dwellings, temples, and tombs into the sandstone, which changed color with the shifting sun. In addition, they constructed a water system that allowed for lush gardens and farming. At its height, Petra reportedly had a population of 30,000. The city began to decline. However, as trade routes shifted, a major earthquake in 363 CE caused more difficulty. And after another tremor hit in 551, Petra was gradually abandoned. Although rediscovered in 1912, it was largely ignored by archaeologists until the late 20th century, and many questions remain about the city. The city of Petra was established as a trading post by the Nabataeans, an Arab Bedouin tribe indigenous to the region in what is now southwestern Jordan. The Nabataeans living and trading in Petra soon accumulated a significant amount of wealth, and an envious Greek empire attacked the city in 312 B.C. This event marks the first reference to Petra in recorded history. The Nabataeans successfully fought back the Greek invaders by taking advantage of the mountainous terrain surrounding the city. The mountains effectively served as a natural wall, buttressing Petra. However, the Greek incursion was not the last time the city would come under attack. In fact, the Romans would invade Petra in 106 AD and ultimately force the Nabataeans to surrender. The Roman Empire annexed the newly gained territory and changed its name to Arabia Petria. They continued to rule over the city for more than 250 years until the middle of the 4th century AD, when an earthquake destroyed many of its buildings. The Byzantines eventually took control of the region and governed Petra for some 300 years. By the beginning of the 8th century AD, Petra was largely abandoned and no longer a significant location commercially, politically, and slash, or culturally. Although no longer an important city, Petra has been noted by historians and archaeologists for its unique architecture as well as a specific innovation made by the Nabataean Bedouins that established the city. Given the rugged, mountainous terrain that surrounds it, Petra wouldn't seem like a logical place to build a city. However, the Nabataeans took advantage of this geography as they erected its key structures. Using an early form of the technique known as rock-cut architecture, the Nabataeans literally carved several of the city's buildings out of the surrounding stone surfaces. As the Nabataean culture evolved, and as the Romans and the Byzantines later sought to leave their own marks on the city, the architecture of Petra began to take on a mix of the different cultures that occupied it. Large and ornate tombs built by the Nabataeans eventually gave way to Christian churches constructed by the Byzantines, who considered Petra the capital of the province of Palestina. During this evolution, while the Romans ruled the city after the Nabataeans and before the Byzantines, the Petra Roman road was built. This served as the main thoroughfare of Petra, and ornate gates were built, in Roman style, to mark the entrance to the city. However, the Nabataeans' influence over the city's design and structure was not completely eliminated by its subsequent rulers. As desert dwellers, the Nabataeans had long struggled during seasons in which rainfall in the region was limited. When the tribe built Petra, though, they developed a unique system of conduits, dams, and cisterns to harvest, store, and distribute rainwater for year-round use. At certain times of year, the area around the city was prone to flooding. However, the Nabataeans were able to effectively control these floods using dams and, therefore, the city's water supply. This meant that they could reside in the city even during periods of drought. It also improved the crop yields of Nabataean farmers. Petra today, after the 8th century, when Petra was largely abandoned as a trading center, its stone structures were used for shelter by nomadic shepherds for several centuries. Then, in 1812, the unique ruins of Petra were discovered by Swiss explorer Johann Ludwig Burckhardt. 
He described the ruins of the once great city in chronicles of his travels. With the Western world now aware of their existence, they soon attracted the interest of architects and scholars, among others. Starting in 1929, British archaeologists Agnes Conway and George Horsfield, as well as scholars Taufik Cannon and Ditlef Nielsen, launched a formal project to excavate and survey Petra. Numerous findings have been made in the decades since, including the 1993 discovery of Greek scrolls dating to the Byzantine period as well as the more recent documentation via satellite imaging of a previously unknown monumental structure buried beneath the sands of the area. In the early 2000s, the site was named one of the seven new wonders of the world, leading to a spike in tourism. Since then, efforts have been made to protect the ruins of Petra from heavy tourism, as well as damage from floods, rain and other environmental factors.